Greetings, my name is Deren Ejernana Ijao and I'm from BA2325B. So today I'm going to discuss about the company history. Between 1964 to 1978, Nike Incorporated was known as Blue Ribbon Sports, a sportwear company based in Beaverton, Oregon. Was formed in 1964 by former track coach Bill Bowman and his former students Fierce Knight. Philip Knight is the Chairman Emeritus of Nike Incorporated. Mr. Knight is a co-founder of the company and has the biggest responsibilities in monitoring the company's successfulness. Mr. Knight has been the president of Nike for a long period of time. Nike first retail store opens in 1966 and the first Nike branded sneakers first released in 1972. In 1978, the firm's renamed to Nike and opened branches including over 170 countries by the early 2000s. And the business logo, the Schwartz logo, was inspired by the symbol of wing of the great goddess. Next, Nike visions is to inspire and generate innovations in every athlete across the world through their sports product. While Nike missions is aimed to provide sports market segments with inspirations and innovations. Nike incorporated organizational culture and value supports the business resilience and capability. Nike Incorporated in possess the combinations of traditions, good habits, core values, and expectations of excellent behavior among their employees. Eventually, Nike Incorporated can maintain the corporate culture which ensure the successfulness of the company. Nike objective are to provide a conditions where people can maximize their contributions to Nike through proper development and innovations. Furthermore, Nike Incorporated offers better opportunities for their consumers by delivering high quality, innovative services and products. Here, I would like to talk about Nike SWOT analysis, which the first one is about strength. Nike market capitalization increased to $224 billion in February 2021 due to increased customer base. Nike and Michael Jordan collaborated on the Air Jordan 1 in 2008. Nike will continue to address environmental concern in the communities where it operates. Nike CEO promised to help find solution to this environmental issue. And for sustainability, Mr. Parker stated that Nike will continue to address environmental concerns in the communities where it operates. Next, let's talk about Nike weaknesses. The pandemic has cancelled or postponed sporting events discouraging physical interaction and gathering. Nike sells 65% of its product directly to wholesaler and retailer. The company moved to zero initiative call for all facilities to be 100% renewable by 2020, with zero carbon emission. While the strategy is commendable, it contradicts Nike on which places innovation ahead of long-term sustainability. First, labor, child labor, low wages, and unsafe working conditions are among the issue raised. Now we will move on to Nike opportunity. The large number of product Nike has produced there is still room for innovation. Nike has partnered with Fitbit to expand its technological reach in fitness and health. Wearable technology that tracks physical activity is a good place to start developing new technology products. Even though Nike is well established in many foreign countries, new opportunities around in emerging markets like India, China, and Brazil. Last one is trend. 
Counterfeit goods can significantly harm Nike revenue and reputation. Nike will have to spend more on marketing due to increased competition from Under Armour and Adidas. Nike sales fell 38% in the second quarter of 2020 and then they continued to fall if the recession hit as hard as predicted. The company global reach marked counterfeit goods a constant threat. The IFE for Nike presented in Table 1. The IFE is concerned with factors that can be controlled to a large extent by the organization. In an IFE, the following are the key functional areas to consider. Management, Marketing, Finance, Operation, Research and Development, and number 6 is Information Technology. The SWOT analysis strength and weaknesses are the most important factor to consider when conducting an IFE. The effectiveness of a firm effort to improve in areas of weakness and capitalize in areas of internal strength is evaluated using the IFE scorecard. Table 2 show Nike EFE. It assess how well a firm responds to external condition and event. Because a firm ability to control external event and condition is limited, it seeks to minimize threats while maximizing opportunities. The external environment of a firm is divided into nine sphere: economic, social, science, culture, demography, environment, politics, law, technology, and competition. The SWOT analysis opportunity trends are the most critical factor to consider when evaluating EFE. Since the EFE doesn't directly measure internal strength and weaknesses, it's not a surprise that the EFE doesn't directly measure ability to respond to external opportunities and threats. The EFE, on the other hand, assess a company respond to a crisis. Here is the achievement of Nike. Nike won two awards in 2019 and three in 2018. In 2019, Nike won best company perks and benefit and best company composition. Nike won best CEO, best company composition and best CEOs for diversity in 2018. Nike employees are happy with their job as evidenced by 6,500 ads rating and 483 responses. In addition to overall culture, employees are asked to read topics such as professional development, retention and other topics of interest. Listed below are some potential issues in Nike. Nike large loss can be traced to the company's extravagant spending habits. Nike Corporation also faced increased competition from a variety of other market players. A decrease in brand power leads to a decrease in customer satisfaction as well as market share. To get a competitive edge in the market, Nike should heavily market and differentiate its product. Business should implement strategies to gain brand power and market share. As brand power is important, the achieving competitive advantages, higher expenditure margin lead to the lower profit margin and in some cases, loss. Let's jump into conclusion. Nike's superior performance is due in part to its competitive positioning and value creation strategies. With fierce competition comes relentless pursuit of superiority and advertising has all contributed to this success. Nike used strategic management tool and models product, press differentiation and distribution channels. Just do it and the Swoosh logo have helped consumers recognize their product. They have kept customers because of their high quality product and unique marketing strategies. Chapter 3 Company Strategic Plan Strategy Formulation Stage 2 during stage 2, the stage known as matching is used to refer to strategy formulation. With the help of external and internal forces, this stage focuses on developing valuable alternative methods. I, I have chosen SWOT metrics and the space metric as the tools for this project. A SWOT matrix is usually a square divided into four quadrants, with each quadrant representing one of the specific elements. Decision makers identify and list specific strength in the first quadrant. quadrant weaknesses in the next, then opportunities, and lastly, trade. The space metric is a management tool used to analyze the company. The strategy, position, and action evaluation metrics, or short as 
Space metric is a strategic management tool that focuses on strategy formulation, especially as related to the competitive position of an organization. Strategy formulation stage 3 QSPM the Quantitative Strategy Planning Matrix QSPM is a strategy management tool for assessing strategy choice and determining relative strategy attractiveness. The QSPM method assesses which of the specific strategy option is feasible and prioritizes these alternatives. As shown in the table above, the highest total attractiveness strategy for Nike is focused on specific US customer with 2.62 grand total. Conclusion for Chapter 3 Company Strategic Plan The SWOT metrics and space metric analyze are substantial impact when establishing possible opportunities technique with the help of crucial external and internal component. QSPM not only reveals the relative attractiveness of competing method, but it also provides an objective basic for selecting key solution. By customizing their strategy for each situation, Nike has become the market leader. The strategy that Nike uses is cost leadership strategy. Nike has a modern cost leadership strategy within its industry. There are a few different choices in the marketplace for buyers to obtain athletic shoes. Moreover, Nike's cost leadership generic strategy sustains competitive advantage based on cost. In this generic strategy, the company minimizes production costs to maximize profitability or reduce selling prices. The combined cost leadership and differentiation generic strategies. In contrast, Nike has significant economics of scale. As the world's largest producer of athletic textiles and equipment, Nike drove the competition. A caveat to their manufacturing process, Nike outsources all of this process to many in Asian countries. Next, diversification strategy. The product offerings encompass virtually any sports needs in apparel, equipment, and shoes. Besides, Nike's product mix diversify, but their actual total product offerings also come from many other clothing related linked firms. Moreover, the biggest strength of Nike is that it is an extremely competitive organization with its approach of just do it slogan for its brand epitomizing its attitude towards business. Besides that, among Nike's newer product offerings, they sell a line of performance equipment under the Nike brand name that includes sport balls, time pieces, and other equipment. Next, differentiation strategy. The product differentiation attributes that Nike pays great attention to the uncanny product features and the timing of introducing their products to market, creating new technologies in material and designs that are continually updated to reflect consumer preferences. Furthermore, another big part of Nike's product differentiation strategy is its relationship with its customers. Being the worldwide leader of ethnic textile for the better part of half century has given Nike a sort of high ground in the market. As a conclusion, the pricing elements will be most important factor influencing a customer's decision to purchase shoes. Technology and business competition are two significant factors that might have impact on next operation. Next will be chapter 5 that is conclusion and recommendation. There are certain strategies that we will suggest and the expectation from it on next company. The first strategy are market development strategies. This strategy may be referred as a growth strategy put in place by companies to introduce their product to target audience that they have not yet reached. Market development may be proven as a two-step system to be forced into the untapped marketplace and the goal to, is to expand the reach into the unique phase or undiscovered market. Next is market penetration strategy. It can be known as the Corporate that runs a social degree attempt on the expansion by optimization on existing product. This strategy would involve in focusing on the selling more product that is already exist in the target market areas. The last strategy is product development strategies where it is seeking on the increasing of sales by improving or modifying present product or services. By developing a new product need to be weighed up against the risk involved overall cost, pressure on teams, resources, and time to market. As for the importance and recommendation of new strategies, market development strategies are one of recommended for Nike. 
alongside the product development, next employer can prepare available in the marketplace, improvement in them where it can increase. A strategic financial objective under this strategy will be helping on the increasing of net profitability. Next is market penetration. It will be the best example where it is was a measurement of how much the product is being sold relatively to the total of estimated market for the product. As for Nike company, they started on the increasing of its store and retails around the globe. A strategic purpose linked to market penetration is for increasing on Nike's market presence by up the number of approved stores. Finally, our product development strategies where it would be the best on supporting Nike business ability. It help in turning an idea into a profitable product and may lead to a modify on the remain competitive within the market areas. As Nike is a worldwide known brand, it will be easy for them for attract their users and supporters to try the new product. This strategy includes the introduction of latest product in the growth of sales demand. This may support Nike differentiation that generate the competitive strategy via product innovation. As for the conclusion, it may surely be put into the company and suddenly different position in the marketplaces. It also can help in planning the growth of the company and gain users' attraction. These strategies can help the company to evolve more on their product so that they can innovate in making something new on their product. That's all for me. Thank you.